Okay, so welcome Carmina Amza to my channel. She's an astrologer from all the way over in Romania, and uh, she actually got some tutoring from me only just a year ago, and she's really learned a lot and progressed a great deal. Of course, she studied a lot before that, so it's not that she's just a total newbie or anything. She's done a lot, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to welcome her to my channel. We've done some cool research on pilots for you guys today, so welcome, Carmina. Uh, thank you, Corey. Uh, thank you for having me on your channel. And uh, for anybody who's interested in tutoring, I really recommend Corey because he helps you with a more systematic approach. And he's like a patient teacher, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, we do that. Um, okay, so I guess we're just going to start by talking about a little bit about career. Uh, there we, me and Carmina both like to use the Jaminee system um, for predicting career, so that's what we will be doing here. And it has a lot to do with the Atmakaraka planet, the planet with the highest degrees in the chart. And there are a few other important career places, and you know, we won't be able to explain everything for you. So this is an advanced class. <laughs> this is an advanced video for more advanced career prediction type stuff. So you'll just have to hang in there if you don't get some of the stuff we're going over. Um, with that being said, the main career planets, we both kind of hypothesize that Venus or Saturn should be important for career Maybe planets. Maybe we should, we should say first that we're talking about planets, right? <laughs> yes. So every person will be different. But when we're looking at pilots, we thought, okay, they ride vehicles. So Venus, the planet of vehicles and conveyances must be important. Mm -hmm. And then we thought okay, well, they're moving through air and, you know, the air element represents Saturn and that's moving and shaking and displacing things. And so that's what we do it, when we get on a plane. So we thought Saturn should be involved too. And since this is a new pioneering sort of thing, Rahu should probably show up a lot. So, yeah, so that uh, you'll, you can wait and we'll have some examples at the end where we sort of show this. And then the thing is, a lot on the same day, the Atmakaraka and the Swamption, all these things can be the same, but on the same day, maybe a, uh, a lot of different careers of people are born, and the way you can see that is through the different house cusps that change very quickly. And so we noticed that the third house, the fourth house, the third, sorry, the third house, we should probably start with that one, Third house represents mechanical skill and technical skill. Yeah, so like being skills. able to, yeah, like being able to run the, the ship and not sink it or yeah. crash it. Um, the fourth house, the house of vehicles. So that should be connected in some way because otherwise they, the Venus planet might make them a teacher or a entertainer or a supermodel or some million other things. Yeah. And then we saw the seventh house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we saw the uh, the seventh house connecting too, which makes sense because that's like very far away travel, like foreign lands, and you know it's the furthest from the ascendant. So it makes sense mm -hmm. if you're gonna spend your life like traveling and you know all around the world and everything on a very casual basis. Should be a lot of seventh house connections, and then it, and then the uh, the tenth house for the sky. Yeah. Because they're up there in the sky, yeah. Um, and then Carmina noticed something else too, which might be crucial. Uh, we're not, we weren't really sure. I'm not sure if it's crucial, but it's important. The sixth house, you noticed that too, right? Yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah. it a lot, connected to the Atma Karaka or other self factors. And I'm thinking maybe it's because the um, it's the third from the fourth. It's, since you were mentioning the fourth is also vehicles, so it's like skill with maneuvering vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and I might, I don't know, I might guess that, this is just a guess though, but if the third house wasn't strongly involved, mm -hmm. maybe they could make up for it if they had the sixth cusp coming in or something. I don't know. Yeah. And again, that should also yeah. be said that, you know, we... So, because... Can you hear me okay? <laughs> it... Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. I just lost you for a second. What were you saying? Okay. No, no, no. I go ahead. I mean, I was just saying, yeah, the 
the six is that almost like a secondary third house, right? It also shows intelligence to deal with problems, right? Because yes. in the natural zodiac, it's it's ruled by by Mars or Virgo or Merc. You know, yeah, know what I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so oh yeah so i want yeah. i wanted to say though that um this is just something that we looked into out of curiosity mainly so we have not been spending like you know all of our time just researching this this is more out of our love of joe tish really and how much fun it is and because a client asked me about being a pilot you know some months back and i looked into i thought about this, this then and then looked into it and thought hmm, yeah this makes a lot of sense and I, I was chatting with carmina about it and so we both had some kind of curiosity to look into it more um and, yeah, and it was the eclipse season and rock was meddling in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the planes, yeah. So Rahu got us a little bit and made us think about some pioneering vehicle stuff going on in the world nowadays. And so, anyways, we are not. This is not like a the end all the end all uh, teaching on pilots, but this is just some fun <laughs> stuff we found that was relevant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and you had sh you kind of baked us up some uh, some pie charts, didn't you? <laughs> yes, some tasty pie charts. Um, <laughs> let me share my screen. Just one second. So I looked at um, just one second. I looked at 78 uh, pilot charts, uh, like looking to find some patterns. And so far, I was looking at the Atma Karaka, like which planet is more frequent. And I saw that they usually come out like a similar amount of times, except Jupiter, which comes out like a very low amount of times, like 5% mm. compared to the average, which is like 15%. Interesting. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. So Jupiter is too heavy to go up. <laughs> 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 yeah that's a, that's pretty good that's good <laughs> for okay, those so, of you uh yeah. just so you know uh, jupiter's name is guru which means heavy in sanskrit so that was a little sanskrit joke <laughs> <laughs> okay Okay, then I looked at the Swamsha in the D9 because that's one of the main uh, indicators to look at when we look at the career. And of course, we just we don't just look at the, the Swamsha, we look at the planets, the other planets with it and the, the way they connect to, to the rest of them. But just like to make a briefing, the, usually it was Virgo, you know, and the um, Sagittarius was also a high number. I had some unfortunately some pilots crashing and that relates to falling from a height okay uh pisces is also like a, a big number it's like nine times i think mm -hmm. and uh, you know the lowest numbers are like cancer capricorn uh libra and aries so i can understand because cancer and capricorn are more emotional like haunted by demons and you know, pilots shouldn't normally be so emotional, right? Mm -hmm. And Aries, because maybe they get too distracted about everyday problems. Maybe that's why it's so low in Libra, because it's more... Well, some of the pilots I had in my research were also doing other things, like they, they when they, at some point, they started a business, or so maybe mm -hmm. that's why. <laughs> but it's interesting, like Virgo comes up a lot. Yeah. Know? And you know, when I was looking, I saw Virgo and Aquarius coming up a lot. I really did. Yeah. I don't. I didn't notice the other ones, but I noticed those coming up a lot. But I, but I felt like I saw Libra and Cancer popping up a lot. Not necessarily as Swampsha, but just in the Rashi or like somewhere, you know. But yeah. I didn't. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. yeah. But that is mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I mean, I guess Aquarius is fixed air, so you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna be in the air for fixed amount of times. I, I don't know. Yeah, I can see that connection. Um, yeah, and Leo, because I think also a lot of the pilots in the research were like pioneers and like doing a great deed for their country. They were being honored, so maybe mm -hmm. uh, that's why. But like, it's interesting that these 
are lower <laughs> in the swamp shop. Yeah. Um, I also found out, I, I don't know why I was looking at Darakaraka. Actually, I know why, because we're, we were talking about Venus mm -hmm. and the fact that it's in Virgo so much, you know? Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the Rashi, like you would expect uh, a lot of great Venus <laughs> and exalted Venus and stuff like that for pilots, but it's actually a lot in Virgo and not only, I mean, there are some pilots who crashed, but there are also a lot of pilots who didn't crash and they have Venus in Virgo. So it's not like a sign that they will be like the worst pilot ever, right? Yeah. It's like we, we were discussing uh, because, uh, you know, when uh, Venus is in Virgo, it's also delighted. So yeah. mm -hmm. like in the compatibility classes, like Ernst says, they find a different interest like you were saying um what were you saying like they they <laughs> or or some people say it's a placement for affairs and i've seen that to be true yeah. but it can also be just like little affairs with things like they fall in love with a yeah. hobby or a book or a thing like that but they stay married um yeah and yeah it's not the worst place for venus to be in definitely um yeah he's still like, delighted yeah and you know yeah, because Venus is also vehicles and Venus is also the romantic partner. So they find romance with their vehicle. Like They spend more time with it. Yeah. <laughs> like With their partner, like sailors did back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. We, we were talking about that too, how, yeah. you know, a, a pilot is almost like a more of a modern day version of a sailor. Yeah. And there's a little bit of a promiscuous uh, connection association exactly. there. And we do see seventh house connections coming up a lot too, like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then Venus and Virgo is a placement that would make one, ha you know, oh, I'm here in this country and I'm going to try to meet with this girl. And then the next month I'm going to meet with this yeah. girl in that country or whatever. Um, so like Venus came up most in Pisces, like 15 percent. But Virgo mm -hmm. was also a lot above average because the average was like six, seven percent. And this is like almost twice the average. Mm -hmm. And then Aquarius came up a lot. I guess I don't know humanitarian. I don't know. air sign. It's an air yeah, sign. Yeah, air you know? sign. Yeah. And uh, Cancer came up a lot. I was thinking about that. Like Venus in Cancer can be like a placement for a scientist or somebody who works in the lab, right? It's one of the placements. So like they're in their cockpit, isolated. Maybe it's one of those things. Like they're yeah almost completely isolated. So. I like seeing that. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but I do really want to say that I like seeing that because um, I I saw Venus connecting to Cancer a lot when I was researching that as well. Um, and even when I when we're going to do the examples, I noticed that the Moon as the Lord of the Cancer Rashi will oftentimes be influential somehow. Like that Cancer Rashi is the Rashi of dwelling in foreign lands or being at a distant place. And exactly. so you're you're, you're going to do that a lot if you're flying internationally so that that makes sense even though that's an enemy place for venus so it's not like a great dignity place so i, I yeah. agree but um, yeah i mean it gets help with other things even though <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so i as like as we were talking i was also looking at the dark Arca because i noticed that venus came up a lot as the dark Arca. <laughs> yeah so, so that's to emphasize like their romance with their vehicle <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes sense yeah yeah and yeah. the sun came up uh, the least so um let's see venus in d16 because you know d16 is the varga that specifically deals with one's vehicles i looked at there as well and mostly it was in virgo wow. and pisces had a lot to like pisces virgo they were the and aquarius was the least in Gosh, the d16 that seems weird yeah uh, <laughs> um but that that's cool that virgo came up again yeah yeah, and uh, I also look at the Shad Bala, which is the operating strength of Venus. And, you know, um, for Venus to meet its minimum requirement, it has to have uh, 300 and at least 330 points. And the average here was 421, so a lot above average, uh, a lot above the minimum requirement, like 100, <laughs> like a third Good. at least. And um, there were very few, like maybe 4% of the, the pilots of the 78 people 
that I looked at that had like below uh, the minimum requirement and the rest of them like all had like good numbers like ranging uh, ranging from like 400 mostly were like 600 like above 600 so i think that's also important you know yeah I mean, that makes sense it can ma- <laughs> the venus can manifest in a lot of ways but we can apply it to this specific case of pilot yeah i yeah, mean so. that would be logical you would expect it to not you know yeah you would expect it to be pretty pretty good for that yeah. to follow venus and i also looked at the ashtaka varga placement of venus uh, like how the environment supports Venus, their vehicle in their life. And I found like a, above average numbers. And I looked at the third, the 10th and the 11th from from uh, Venus. And the highest numbers were for the 11th from Venus, maybe because a lot of, I told you, a lot of the, the pilots I studied were like pioneers. And I like, were breaking records like distance and the first woman flying over Ecuador or things mm-hmm. like that. So yeah. maybe that's that's has something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, like like getting a getting some sort of validation or title or re- yeah. reward for like, the for yeah. the so yeah. the environment being supportive for that vehicle getting mm-hmm. a title with the person. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah, the, of Varga is interesting. <laughs> yeah, and for those for those that are watching the 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 reason for the titles is the eleventh house connects to titles and like uh rewards and medals or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so that's about it. Like I'm gonna stop sharing. Cool. For the yeah. moment. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, let's go into some uh examples. Sound good? Yes. All right. So <laughs> Share my screen this is over like here. Tutoring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is basically what we did when we tutored, you know, and uh, I would just like uh, test. Oh, actually, it was music when, yeah, we, it wasn't that long before we started going really hardcore into looking at just spending an hour looking at different musicians and testing yeah. out the Jaimini techniques. But um, so this is similar, I guess. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, Chesley Sullenberger. This was a guy mm-hmm. who, um, yeah, he, he was. The plane. <laughs> yeah, he landed the the this plane on in the Hudson River in this emergency landing in 2009 in January. It was a really big deal. I remember hearing about it in the news. Yeah, yeah. Um, like no passengers were harmed. Like it's a really big deal to land in the river without casualties. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. seems pretty miraculous. Um, okay, so the all right. So we're just going to start with the Rossi chart. Um, Right away, the Atmakarika planet is Venus. Okay, that's up. Oh, whoa, sorry. that's a good um, start. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good start. Atmakarika is Venus. Conveyances, vehicles. It's in an air sign, so it's you know gonna be dealing with air, the sign of Aquarius, like we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, the ruling planet of the ascendant is Jupiter, and he is in the fourth house of vehicles, but conjunct the third cusp of short distance travels the third cusp is traveling within one's own nation and then the seventh cusp is other nations and then the ninth cusp is traveling within other nations because it's the third from the seventh and so those three come up a lot but i didn't see that the ninth had to come up and i think Mm -hmm. that's because not all pilots travel internationally a lot they might just do it yeah they might just be like a domestic yeah Yeah. charter right Good, good yeah that's it um and so Jupiter is in the fourth here, and he's in his own sign, in a Mahapurusha yoga. That means that this person is, does good and stuff like that. And he's delighted by Mars, so he's, he wants to do good. But Mars is actually shaming Jupiter here. And this is not a career thing. This is just to understand the context of this guy. Uh, this shame sort of thing, they're both in good dignity. And, uh, ah! and so um, the... The, this tragedy, this event, this crazy, scary thing of Mars, an accident, um, and notice Mars rules the fourth cusp and the twelfth cusp. Um, that was trying. That was like a thing that was meant to, you know, scare him or shame him. But because his Jupiter is in such good dignity, it would repel that or would do the right thing, ascent in a, in a sense. So anyway, that's kind mm-hmm. of a neat thing. You do see the shame there, um, and that's. Like we say, uh, lajita or shame doesn't keep a plant from being productive. It just adds psychological stuff. 
So anyways, that's, that's there off to the side, but looking at, uh, oh yeah. And then, so yeah, looking at Jupiter, the ruling planet, he's conjunct the third cusp. He's with the fourth cusp Lord of vehicles. So that connects his career to vehicles. He Rashi aspects the seventh cusp of foreign lands. And he Rashi aspects the ninth of, uh, like I said, traveling in other nations. Um, yeah. yeah. And so that all makes sense, right? Yeah. And I also like see a Parivartana Yoga, an interchange between the third Lord and the 11 Lord. So that means up, ups and downs with titles and uh, rewards and something like that. And I know that uh, at some point he took place like in a protest. He was publicly criticizing uh, the fact that uh, pilots were underpaid or something like that. So it has to do with uh, like rewards. And yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, when the third house interchanges with any other house lord, that's a misery yoga, uh, like a Dania mm-hmm. yoga, they call it, for those who are mm-hmm. watching. And then, uh, yeah, like it's, she was saying, sorry, what were you going to say? It, I, I don't think it's a misery yoga. The misery yoga is the six, the eight, and the twelve. This is called differently. The third house oh, is yeah, yeah, ups yeah, and downs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, so that's good. So he's not miserable. He just has, he's not. He has just to has put ups in energy and downs. to it. He yeah. had a, a down, a big down. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, just like ignoring that yoga, just knowing that the third and the 11th are interchanging means the third mm-hmm. of short distance travel. He makes yeah. money, 11th, he gains money making paychecks, 11th house from the third house, the travel. Yeah. And then the exactly. third house holds Venus and Sun. Sun is also a natural uh, career karaka too. So just yeah. from another angle, the sun, oh yeah, like I wrote here, the Sun is a natural karaka being conjunct Venus again, reinforces all of this stuff that was said. Mm-hmm. Um, did I say this part? Yeah, Venus is the Amakarika and is Rashi aspected by Saturn. That's also very important because Saturn gives manifesting strength and uh, also like what we just said with the interchange. Um, and so Venus, Saturn, and Rahu are all very, very prominently connected to this person's path in life. Um, you know because, what we forgot to mention? That we, we noticed that we noticed that there's a lot of Moon Saturn or Sun Saturn stuff in these pilots charts, <clears throat> you know? Yeah, yeah, Even that's here, like there's mm-hmm. an aspect like between Moon and Saturn, and the Moon is with the eighth cusp. So <laughs> there's like you were noticing something about them. Yeah, um, we we talked about this before, but not in this video. So I should say it. Uh, there is a weird. There's a little bit of something that I've noticed with pilots because there's like, and I'm not mm-hmm. saying this in a judgmental way, but there's a what makes you want to be away from your land? Like what makes you want to be up in the clouds and run away all the time and not be at home and on the ground? There's usually something that if, if for at least for men, men are very easy at like good at compartmentalizing their emotions and just blocking that stuff out. And um, mm-hmm. initially, it was mostly men who were pilots, and I just. I see this connection of like promiscuous men who are avoiding their emotions basically. And that's what we see a lot in the chart. But, um, but yeah, that's also like when we look at the the fourth Bava is Pisces. I know the fourth cusp is Aries, but even so like the fourth cusp Lord is with Rahu. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Mm -hmm. there's some like disturb mental unrest. (laughs) <laughs> to say or, the least yeah or like just being at home doesn't feel the same way right. that it does for a normal yeah. person we could say yeah, yeah. um i've yeah. seen a lot of this one with eight house stuff you know yeah i can say yeah that's something that you know we would maybe need to know a little more about the person to see how it plays out but yeah that's mm-hmm. a very good point and i did see that a lot <laughs> too so i'm glad we mentioned that um but we should mention like the what he said, like he was making deposits and his Saturn in Libra, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I want to get to that. In Pisces. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let me get to that. All right, you're jumping okay. ahead. I got all this stuff here. Okay, so, um, <laughs> all right, so, but, but back to this uh, Venus is the AK, aspected mm-hmm. by Saturn, and the ruling planet is conjunct Rahu. So there's these nice connections of the three main things we want, right? Rahu, mm-hmm. Saturn, and Venus to the self. All right, so now. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, and I already said that, that Saturn and Venus are both giving, uh, manifesting strength to each other and to the 10th cusp of the sky. So we've got the 10th cusp connected. So now at the Navamsha, oh, let me move this over. Um, actually, I'll just show you it like, ah, all right, whatever. Um, 
let me show it in a bigger the jaminy way like that yeah um yes <laughs> yeah okay so looking at the navamsha like that they what did i put here yeah lagna lord goes to the ninth nice it's with the fourth cusp nice and it's in the sign of foreign lands cancer dwelling in foreign mm -hmm. lands that all makes sense um and it's getting manifesting strength from a very powerful moon in the seventh house mm -hmm. that makes On sense journeys yeah like foreign lands and yeah um that also helps his emotional stuff to have it see that it's like you know in good dignity in the navamsha Mm -hmm. um what do we have here venus in the is the atmakarika aspected oh yeah venus is exalted i should have said that but yeah it's exalted it's aspected by rahu and jupiter the lord so that gives manifesting strength and conjunct a fallen mercury though which isn't really great i think yeah maybe that fallen mercury contributed to the mechanical error in the plane that oh yeah. yeah and look mercury is the sixth lord of like accidents yeah um yeah and then also the sixth lord like carmina mentioned is is here again um all right maybe it came up a lot because a lot of these people were involved in accidents as well maybe, maybe. yeah um Okay, Amakarika Venus rules Saturn, the air element planet, and the sun and the moon. That's another important thing is that with career stuff, you can use dispositor ships, and you mm -hmm. want to use dispositor ships. So career planets Venus, look at what Venus rules, and at, look at, you know, the Swamsha, and look at what the, Lord, the, the Amakarika planet is ruling. Moon, we know how important moon is for foreign lands and travel, and then Saturn, the air element planet, the lore of the 10th cusp, and then also Sun, Lord of the 11th, he's going to want to make money. Um, but the Sun is debilitated, so not as important. Um, and, oh, and then it's the third cusp. Venus rules the third cusp and the seventh cusp. Um, I might have written that down here somewhere. But yeah, so again, we see third, fourth, seventh, and tenth a lot, right? Yeah. Um, Venus rules Saturn, which rules the tenth cusp and is exalted. Strongest out of all these. Yeah, I just, I just said that, yeah. Okay, and so then... Um, so yes, yeah, so I wrote so quite a lot of vehicle Venus plus pioneering tech Rahu plus moving in the air tenth and Saturn equals pilot. Then Jupiter shamed by Mars, but all in good dignity, saves people in a heroic flight. Now yeah. tell them about the the cool quote right here. <laughs> no, you read it. You read it. I just think it's cool, but yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you're the one who found this quote, but basically. Yeah. Uh, Sullenberger, described by friends as shy and reticent, uh, exalted Saturn, starving sun, um, makes you kind of shy, introverted, but really, really good, usually at what you're doing, was noted for his poise and calm during the crisis. New York City mayor dubbed him Captain Cool. <laughs> Air element, Saturn. Yeah, Saturn. Yeah. Libra. <laughs> yeah, exalted, you know. Like um, charming and cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and now I'm just thinking that it's count. We count backwards from the Swampsha, and so it's mm -hmm. in the sixth of accidents too, or like problems. You know, I don't know. That, mm -hmm. That's that's kind of neat. But uh, yeah. So yeah, anyways, so Saturn came out in a stressing situation. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, um, or like an accident brought out greatness of him. You know. Um, mm -hmm. And so, nonetheless, Sullenberger suffered symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder in the coming weeks and sleeplessness and flashbacks. And he said the moments before the ditching were the worst sickening pit of your stomach falling through the floor feeling that he'd ever experienced. He also said, and this is the best part, one way of looking at this might be that for 42 years, I've been making small and regular deposits in this bank of experience, education, and training. And on January 15th, the balance was sufficient so that I could make a very large withdrawal. Ah! It's <laughs> great. Right. Yeah, it's like the, it's the exalted Saturn in the Rashi and Jupiter in Pisces. Like, what more do you want? Like, the Lord of Karma, karma Banks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's like, I mean, and even uh, great, like, sages that have exalted Saturns have also said that, you know, when you get enlightened, even if you have too much karma, you'll have to reincarnate and, and like just live spend a blissful, it. yeah, you have to spend <laughs> your bank balance. And that's why it's so hard to really get liberated. Um, 
because it's so hard to make it balance out even. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's really also, cool. I wanted to say like the, the sleeplessness uh, and whatever post-traumatic symptoms, maybe they also relate to the fourth, um, the fourth Baba with uh, Mars and oh, uh, yeah. Rahu. What did he have there? So the shame, who, I mean, even if he did save them, he still like suffered from some trauma, right? And then also in the Navamsha, the, the ruling planet is like debilitated in the fourth, but yeah. it is delighted. So it's like, it's, but that kind of shows like some weird, you know, nightmares or yeah. things. And then, yeah, he we had, see that, yeah. yeah, the fourth house, like she was saying, has this shame thing in it. So it would make sense that he would have nightmares and dreams about it. And, um, yeah. All right. So what do you think? Want to go to the next example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Okay. All right. So that one's done. This one is uh, pilot anonymous. nine. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is an anonymous pilot we got from astro.com, uh, mm -hmm. their database, pilot 9887, if you wanna look at it yourself. Um, okay, so the rising signs Capricorn, uh, the ruling planet Saturn goes to the seventh house of, of you know foreign lands, and it's in the sign of foreign lands, Cancer, so that's nice, and with Rahu, which we also wanna see. So that does make sense. Uh, the Atmakarika is the moon, but the moon disposits all of this stuff, you mm -hmm. know? So that's why that Saturn and Rahu are, that's why piloting and moving in the air is a career thing and not, you know, I don't know, like if Jupiter was there, they'd be a writer, you know, but it, yeah. it's not. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's what the moon's up to. And the, the moon is the career planet. Um, sorry, I keep... I don't know why it makes that noise. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but it makes the noise. No, I can't because you're wearing headphones. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the moon, um, yeah, the moon is with the sun, but that's just ruling the eighth cusp was not super significant. Um, oh, the pata is Libra, the tenth. Uh, and oh, like you were saying before, the sun is another cell factor, so it emphasizes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that does make that more important. Like if so, we want to get like really analytical, we can go to the Padas, but I don't yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, um, Pada, I'll leave that alone. But if you see the Pada yeah. in, this, in a sign of Venus or Saturn, that's really good. It's what I saw a lot, and that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, so Pada here is in Libra and the 10th cusp. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Venus, Rashi aspects Ascendant, Venus, Rashi aspects Rahu, and Venus, Rashi aspects Saturn. So that's perfect. We've got the connections. Ra mm -hmm. The reason we're using Rashi aspects, that's what you want to use for career because they tie things in. Planetary aspects are great, but that's for other stuff. Psychological. Yes, exactly. All right. So I think I just basically impromptu went over all this right here. Um, seventh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I, should, <laughs> I wrote the notes. I don't even read them. Um, I wrote ruling planet seventh Saturn uh, and conjunct Rahu aspect of Venus. Perfect. Not for relationships though. Um, moon is at Makarika. You can't have it all. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The fact that the moon rules the seventh cusp is important. Um, mm -hmm. And then the yeah the Lagnesh Saturn being aspected by Venus and then also Venus ruling the tenth cusp. Um, Oh yeah, Mars also aspects which rules the fourth cusp of vehicles. So this is all that's all making sense. Um, mm -hmm. Now let's look at the Novamsha. Okay, so mm, exalted Jupiter. That's very good. That's lucky, mm -hmm. and it's in the mm -hmm. seventh seventh cusp. Journeys. <laughs> yeah, and being in foreign lands, he's probably enjoys it a lot and uh venus it on the ascendant by the moon it's lord yeah. yeah and it gets manifested oh it's got double manifesting strength because yeah. of jupiter oh and because of mercury triple yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so i did notice the manifesting strength stuff working you know with this stuff mm -hmm. as i was looking at it but i i you know if we want to we could probably write that in for the what you would want to see you'd probably want to see that at least a couple times but yeah we see mm -hmm. it there um moon is in an air sign again aquarius which we saw a lot sun with moon that same connection is going on here in the navamsha chart um oh Ra moon is rashi aspected by mars fourth cusp lord lord of rahu 
again, seeing the, the, the fourth cusp, Rahu, all this stuff coming up again. Um, again, I'm not looking at my notes, though. <laughs> Let me see. Um, Sun gives the entrepreneurial stuff. Um, oh, yeah, because this person had convenience stores and yeah, yeah. built homes. So, yeah, the son being with the Amakarika also made him an entrepreneur. Uh, sun rules Saturn. Oh, yeah, good, good. Okay, so sun disposits the air planet Saturn. Um, Venus being on the ascendant, I already mentioned that. Venus Rashi aspecting both Rahu and Saturn. Again, it's just perfect. Uh, we're not, we don't see it that perfect every time, but that, that looks good. Mars aspects AK, which rules Rahu in fourth cusp. I already said that. And then Jupiter, we already said that, but Jupiter does rule the third cusp, which we didn't notice. And then, so yeah, so again, third, seventh, um, oh, I wrote 11th, but I think I meant something else there. Fourth um, and 10th coming in. And Venus, Maybe Rahu, Saturn prominent. I mean, for 11th is important, too, like we said, for the... Um, either the rec record breaking the titles or like financial reward like this guy was a convenience store so he was like a business person so 11th cast makes sense <laughs> it does yeah that's yeah. good thank you for adding that because it does make sense um, with this person and that's another thing that's tricky is people will have more than one career and you have to kind of consider that when you're looking yeah. at career definitely um, do we see anything else with this one um, I do yeah. like, oh, sorry, what were you about to say? No, 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 go ahead, you, you say it. I do like that, I do like that Venus was in the Ashvini nakshatra of swiftness, because the plane is in, like, the swiftest way to travel. Mm, you look at nakshatras in the Navamsha, that's... Oh, no, I just saw that it was there, it's, uh... Okay. <laughs> no, I, I don't do that, no, 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 that's not something, it's just in, it's just in, uh, here. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing that I didn't really look at, like the nakshatras, but I'm sure they w they would have something to say. Yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. And I, um, I the only one I had in mind was Ash uh, uh, Ashwini. You know, I was like, I'd like to see some Ashwini coming up. You know, mm -hmm. because it's Pioneer. swift and it's like, uh, or like I would like to see Saturn or Venus connected to Ashwini somehow because um. You know, that's the swiftness and horses and horse symbolize power and fast. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and a plane horse is power. like, yeah. And like a plane is like a very modern version of that. So that's yeah. cool that we can that's also great. consider, you know, yeah. Like we can consider that this Venus, Rahu, Saturn aspect, all of what we said above is even mm -hmm. more important with the Ashvini nakshatra. But um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I like... Um, I like what Earth says, always says about Rahu, like it, it brings you out there, right? <laughs> Sometimes it brings you up there. So <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and also, in my opinion, like planes are just this very like, I don't know, like they feel kind of Rahu or hollow or I just feel like something like this is plastic. Like, are you serious? You're like flying me up a million miles up in the air and there's just like a plastic thing right here. I don't know. Yeah. I just think they crank planes out right now so easily and they never really, yeah. they don't crash that often. So I'm not criticizing it, but there's this very Saturn cold, like Rahu hollow feeling kind of when you get, or at least when I get on a plane, I don't know. Maybe that's just my inner feeling, but Okay, um, did you notice anything? I don't know. I didn't look at the Shodamsa chart or the D60. Yeah, oh. Look for oh, yeah, I already saw something. So the yeah. D60, the Amakarika is in Cancer, sign of foreign lands mm -hmm. with Venus, vehicle planet. And with the second of uh, financial gains, like he was interested in financial gains because later he opened convenience stores and that's also a moon thing, right? Oh, oh yeah, and stores. luxuries and food. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Food and bev stuff. So is, he worked yeah. his Venus to the max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Rahu and Saturn are again Rashi aspecting the moon and Venus there. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, again the element of air and pioneering stuff. So this chart worked great. Um you want to move to another one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay, so this is pilot 19725. Pull up the notes here. Nice, delighted Venus. Okay, yeah, so this person has Venus delighted. delighted. Yeah, delighted in every way possible. <laughs> yeah. 
so again, vehicles, this person's going to enjoy vehicles. <laughs> um, <laughs> Again, it's aspected by Rahu. Well, let me just look at my notes here before I jump into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Moon is the Atmakarika. Uh, moon rules the seventh cusp again, which we've seen it ruling or conjunct the seventh a lot. Yeah. Uh, seventh Lord. Yeah. And uh, with the seventh Lord. Yeah. So that, and then the moon, remember, rules the sign of foreign lands. And Rashis mm -hmm. are kind of important in that way with this Jaminy stuff. So. Then Capricorn Lagna, Lagna Lord is in the ninth house. Uh, wait, what? No. Yeah, ninth house, but eighth cusp, sorry. Ninth house of traveling in other nations. Uh, I wrote that often it seems like the Lagna Lord is in the visible half of the zodiac, but I don't know if I actually still saw that to be true for everything, so I don't know about that. Um, Saturn rules Venus, the vehicle planet. Right, okay, so Saturn by dispositorship. Ah, so by the, the Lagna Lord is dispositing Venus. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and Venus is aspected by Rahu. So progressive vehicles. And then Venus is quite strong, being delighted in every way. And then Venus is in an air sign again, along with, oh, and then the 10th, Lord of the 10th cusp is in an air sign again, is in Libra. And the 10th cusp Lord is Rashi aspecting that Venus. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, you know what I, I noticed, like, um, not like very, very often, but I found like Venus with K2 uh, or K2 in Libra, which uh, like shows a past life connection to vehicles, like being connected or and also like being disappointed maybe in the relationship life and uh, contributing to the escapism with things. Yeah. So. Yeah. I could see that. And then also I think of Rahu and Aries as like having to kind of be bold and do this new crazy thing, you know, and fly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for Rashvini. I'm just seeing Rahu and Revati. Hmm. Okay. I think uh, Hasta is also maybe another thing because it's like skill with hands, Hasta, and um, driving maybe it's also important. So I don't know a lot about Hasta, so I don't, I'm not a nakshatra buff anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just know a few things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if anybody in the comments, like, see some connection, let us know, because I'm curious. <laughs> yes, please do. Yeah. Um, where would, uh, yeah, so then I, uh, that was it for the Rashi chart. It looked, it looked mm -hmm. good enough. And then, um, oh, Venus also ruling the fourth cusp is important. And then, um, okay. Let me um, close this and I look at the Navamsha. Oh, what do you another say? Another Parivartana, Parivartana Yoga with the second and the ninth door. So this is like a, a Maha Yoga oh, because it's a triangle. Yeah, yeah. So making a lot of money, maybe. Yeah, and from, through, uh, from through the, the vehicle. Travel. Yeah. yeah the <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys, that Saturn's in the ninth house. Ignore the eighth, the number eight there. That's just the eighth cusp. So that's still the ninth lord and the, uh, the second lord in ninth, ninth lord in second. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the Navamsha chart. Okay. We see Cancer, sign of foreign, yeah, foreign lands and Rahu right on the ascendant. You were, yeah, you saw that too. Okay. So that's perfect. Um, Yeah, Lagna has Rahu on Ascendant is again foreign sign related. The moon, the ruling planet, goes to the uh, sixth house with a strong Jupiter. Jupiter rules an exalted Venus, so an exalted mm -hmm. vehicle thing. That's also in the ninth. Um, Jupiter yeah, and Venus. Oh, yeah, Venus aspects the Atmakarika, the moon. What was, oh, the moon was Atmakarika, and it's in Sagittarius, so it's like fall from a height. But oh, it's yeah. like all these benefic aspects, so I think he's safe. <laughs> oh, but Sun and Saturn are still aspecting, so I wonder if I he know. has. Ha I wonder if he has had a weird scare or a weird issue. Yeah. But you're. But yeah, I mean, I would agree that the exalted Venus, the Jupiter, are the strong. They're both really strong. So this is a safe person to fly with, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I also noticed, like, have you noticed when looking at the Navamsha sun with Saturn a lot? 
Uh, I didn't, but I know in another in another example we just did, we saw that. Yeah, yeah. but I did, I did not notice that. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to look at it statistically in the future because I'm curious, like, why would that happen in the Navamsha? Like, not in the Rashi, but in the Navamsha. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. Hmm. So what else have you noticed? Okay, yeah, so... Um, both Jupiter, yeah, so then Saturn is the seventh cusp lord, and he aspects the Atmakaraka as well. And the Atmakaraka rules the tenth cusp in this Varga. So that mm -hmm. that's all good. It doesn't connect to the fourth cusp, but then the fourth cusp lord is Rashi aspecting the ascendant and the and giving manifesting strength to the fourth, and it's Rashi aspecting the seventh. Um, I don't see a connection there, though. Um, Oh yeah, third cusp lord is a sun, and that's also connecting and aspecting the Atmakarika. So yeah, we see third, seventh, tenth, fourth, not a lot in this one Varga, but we saw it enough overall, um, yeah. I would say. And we saw plenty of Venus. So. <laughs> yeah, we saw plenty of Venus, so vehicles are important. Um, and in this one I write, we see Cancer a lot. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think this was at the point where I was starting to notice, man, it seems like the moon is important just ruling the Cancer Rashi, or like somehow the Cancer Rashi does seem to be getting involved for these yeah. people. And that does make it's sense if they're going to, yeah. yeah, if they're going to um, be in foreign lands for a long time or for, you know, different points in their life. Um, and then look at the D60. Again, Moon is the Amakarika and is again with yeah, Venus. Venus. Yeah, and Venus is exalted. So, mm -hmm. how about that? <laughs> yes, manifesting strength from Jupiter. That's very nice. Of yeah, them. it does. <laughs> yeah, and it gets manifested by Jupiter. And and the Lagnapada is a sign of Saturn again and holds Rahu in it. So, okay. All right, so I feel good about that one. How do you feel about that yeah. one? <laughs> Right. I feel like we illustrated our point. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm getting hungry. This might be the last one for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So um, here we go. Venus is the Amakarika again. But like Carmina showed, that's not the Amakarika every time, but you'll see it with the Venus in this swamp show or, you know what I mean? Or something going on. So Libra or something. Yeah. And then so... Yeah, this one, Venus is in Libra, and that's that's a sign of cardinal air moving in air. So I would say if you don't see Cancer, that would be the next most important sign probably. Or, or I I don't know. I would say that, that that's, that's significant, you know? Wouldn't you agree or wouldn't you think yeah, so? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would. I would because, you know, the, the cardinal signs, or they're more pioneering, and they're doing, like, swift actions for a short time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so I think it fits. So I would say the house-wise, 10th house is important, most important yeah. for the sky. Yeah. But then for I sign, that. I would say for the sign, Libra would be the same thing, like moving through air, because it's, it's moving air. So if you think about it, we're moving on a plane through air. The Rashi Libra should, you know what I mean? That's what I was mm -hmm. saying. Like, so uh, like that's, if we're talking about Rashi's as environments, like in that video, like Libra yeah. should have a little bit to do with moving in air, you know what I mean? Or like being on a plane yeah. maybe. I don't know, that's still, that's sort of speculative, but I just felt like mentioning it. Okay, so what we see here, Venus, uh, the Amakarika is Venus, the Amakarika is in Libra, an air sign, like what, what I just said, the Amakarika is conjunct the 10th cusp Lord, Mercury of the sky, and who's also the Lagna Lord, so they're connecting. He's connected um, to Kato, so he has some past life experience with, many, with driving vehicles. <laughs> oh yeah, and then that's in the ninth ninth uh, house of foreign, tra you know, traveling in foreign lands. So or pilgrimages. Not... Yeah, know, a lot of of these pilots, anonymous ones, they say he's a spiritual person. One of them was given a gold chain that was materialized by a holy person. So oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah. So maybe this is one of those people because, yeah, that we know that this K2 is in good dignity by by its Lord Venus being strong there. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we see here? The um, Amakaraka is not with Saturn, but he's conjunct the Lord of Saturn. So that mm -hmm. is good. And 
Um, Rahu oh, is not good. Rahu's not aspecting, but Rahu is in the third, so that's good because the third has yeah you know has to do with travel. Um, Saturn on the ascendant, seventh and fourth Lord on the ascendant. So that those are the other two important houses that are that are crucial. So we got tenth, seventh, and fourth. Third, not super strong, but Mars, the third cusp Lord, does Rashi aspect the ascendant and does aspect Saturn, but doesn't Rashi aspect Venus. Um, I would like it to do that, but that's, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I, think it, I think it's good. Overall, you know, um, Lord of Rahu. Oh, yeah, and then the Lord of Rahu is in the fourth, um, which I think makes sense, right? Because then it's mm -hmm. like fourth house vehicles, and he's despising Rahu, so this person is more more into pioneering vehicles. And then with Mars, he might, this person might be sort of an engineer too, or something like that, or be yeah. into that. But, mm -hmm. um, and then the Pada holds Rahu. Oh yeah, so I was looking for Rahu a little more. So I said, that's where Rahu comes in. Pada, the Lagna Pada is Scorpio with Rahu in it. Um, the Swamsha is, Venus in Taurus, which is a good, that's a good Swampsha. Um, and it's, that again is looking like a spiritual person, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and here, let me, Venus with a ninth cusp. <laughs> yeah, let me make, let me make that bigger. Right. Um, um, here, so that the, you guys can see this a little bit better. This is an Avamsha chart. Um, Moon is ruling the fourth cusp, which we would, yeah, we see that, and Moon is Rashi aspecting Venus, so we see the fourth cusp connection, so he could have been a teacher or a luxury, you know what I mean, or own convenience yeah. stores or grocery stores, but because of that fourth cusp connection, ooh, okay, vehicles, and then... Yeah. Uh, sun is debilitated, and Sun is a dark Karaka, so maybe relation i mean the lack of luck in relationships pushed him to a more spiritual or something yeah and then also or maybe like led to the escapism wanting to fly yeah, thing maybe yeah. Yeah. yeah um uh venus is manifesting the moon that's a good point giving manifesting mm -hmm. strength to the moon let me see here moon rest rush aspects uh uh sun rules third and seven oh sun does not rule third or seventh but he rules the lord of the third and the seventh cusp mars which that's important um mm -hmm. and then also just having the lord of the third and the seventh in the fourth from the logna that's significant too i would say um mm -hmm. tata holds jupiter and mercury mercury is lord of saturn and rahu and it's also an air sign so that's kind of nice uh, the the Lagna Pada goes to Aquarius, another sign of Saturn, like we kept seeing, or like I mentioned earlier, and then and it's with. It's manifesting the sign of Cancer, the end of fourth cusp, because it's affecting oh, it. Oh, yeah. good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, and then that's also just a good a good point too for the that fourth sign Cancer is really well manifested, you know. Um, and yeah so that all looks good and then yeah and then mercury rules saturn and rahu so he's dispositing saturn and rahu so that's very important and that's yeah and he he's ruling that and he's connected he's there in the pata okay um and then i saw something in the d60 it looks like uh um, I would be a bit wary about like the cusps in the d60 <laughs> yeah yeah i i also wanted to mention that too um that's why i wrote but the rest doesn't match well <laughs> so um in the d60 venus is con it's venus is nice that the amakarika is in a sign of saturn in the d60 mm -hmm. good just like pada so so the way we're talking about saturn and venus as career planets having the swamsha as that sign or the amakarika in that sign the d60 is kind of another way of getting getting to say that same point or having the pada fall on that um, is a good or in way the to deep see end, that. Yeah. If you want to go there. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, yeah, and then, yeah, we can go, uh, I want to go into D16, but then I feel like I might, I don't know, I might fail there, but, um, but yeah, Venus is again in a sign of Saturn in the D60, which is something we would want to see. Um, yeah, so 
this this chart also made sense. Um, I would also note that just having the moon in the seventh is also kind of, because we've seen how important in the Rashi chart, the moon ruling Cancer, that being the planet of foreign lands and foreign travel and then, or not planet that rules the sign of that stuff and it being in the mm -hmm. house of that stuff definitely fits so yeah and also like uh, in almost every chart like rahu is with the moon or aspecting the moon or in the moon sign so there's a definite connection between like rahu and cancer definitely and look at this the lord of rahu is mars and he's rashi aspecting the moon just like you were just saying so yeah mm -hmm. Oh. And Rahu is, I mean, separating as well. So separating before the from the pouring man. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> and that's interesting because the moon is the like, the, like the rules, like you know, the low, like creeping and being on the ground and yeah. stuff, and the creeping yeah. form and all that. And so moon Rahu is sort of, and so yeah, like a little bit of a separating energy from that would make sense yeah. to want to get you up in the sky. All right, cool. Well, hey, I feel pretty good about this. Do you have anything else to add? No, not at the moment. I think we covered a lot. <laughs> good. All right, cool. Well, you guys, this is a good introduction to Carmina and a good introduction to career stuff with Jaminy. So if you like this, you can go get a reading from her or from me or you get tutoring or you do do something with your with study this. on your own <laughs> yeah do do whatever you gotta do i hope that this yeah. i hope that this helps you and helps you guys learn yeah thank you for having me Corey. all right cool thank you too carmina all right bye now <laughs>